good day. This is Dr. Baldwin, and this bulletin is a response to some of the issues raised about a certain committee. Let us clarify the position of RAW. P10 events are not similar to P2 designated rifts. In an event of a P10 manifestation, the area within a 10 km radius needs to be evacuated in its initial phase to prevent human casualties. Under no circumstances is anyone to approach or disturb a P10-1 manifestation. And when something does break through, the Campari Protocol comes into effect immediately. When the protocol is initiated, containing the threat within the P-10 affected area becomes a top priority until reinforcements arrive. Before the protocol becomes into effect, the special committee entomologists are to be informed. These men and women are equipped with an experimental arsenal that they have been developing to combat these incursions. Still. They can merely contain what pours into the area. Our priority should be to protect as many lives as possible. That being said, never lose sight of the fact that we cannot save everyone. This is why the Campari Protocol was devised. The chair and the advising committees are fully aware of how the members of the Association of Ishtar feel about the protocol, but until our defensive measures are able to discern any threat with absolute certainty, we believe the protocol is prudent and ethically justified. To reiterate, the associates abstain from any engagement. But once a volunteer rises to the occasion, they are expected to fulfill the responsibilities they have taken upon themselves. Especially any members who seek to join the entomologist are expected to follow these protocols. Anyone who disagrees is free to stay on the sideline, but are asked to keep their opinions to themselves. This is an excerpt from the Manual on Breach Containment, 1872. In the event of a P-10 occurrence, the top priority is to quarantine the affected area, inform special committee entomologists and await their arrival. When P-10-2 instances are reported, Protocol P-10-2 Revision 5, aka the Campari Protocol, is to be followed to the letter without exception. In case any form of life does escape the quarantine zone, associates should be dispatched immediately to prevent it from causing panic or wreaking havoc to the population. The existence of P-10 is being suppressed by most authorities, and the chair's current position is to comply with the blackout until proper defensive mechanisms have been developed. For this purpose, a cover story has been devised. See document P-1033 for an overview of measures in effect. Description. P-10 is a poorly understood event that could last for any amount of time. P-10 begins when an unstable rift designated P-10-1 opens. P-10-1 is often described as a hole or tear in reality itself that takes the form of a muddy boiling mass that dissolves anything it comes in contact with. Everything within the vicinity of P-10-1 is affected by a change in gravity and other unexplained phenomena. Objects and life forms in close proximity are pulled into the tear never to be seen again. As for other phenomena within P-10, the possibility that reality itself is changed is not beyond possibility. During this phase of the event, witnesses have claimed to see living shadows or shadow people move in places where light should be. Most known examples of P-10-1 close after a few minutes, hours or even days. 
However, there are reports from foreign agencies that suggest there might be possible P10-1 instances that have been open for extended periods of time. There is an unconfirmed report intercepted from the Austrian-Hungarian Evidence Bureau that suggests there is a tier that has been open for at least a year. Then there is the situation that there is no sign the situation will be resolved for the foreseeable future. After the initial stage, the situation within P10 seems to stabilize. During this period, the civilian population within the sphere of influence can still be evacuated. However, it's unwise to enter P10 due to the gravitational effects and because of P10-1's volatile nature. Any attempts to enter or otherwise disturb P10-1 will almost certainly lead to the appearance of P10-2. If any instances of P10-2 appear, quarantine becomes a top priority. P10-2 life forms vary greatly in size, shape and behavior, however even the non-aggressive ones could cause great damage to their surroundings just with their presence. After an undetermined period, P10-1 closes and the effects of P10, such as the change in gravity, subside. However, the life forms that appear to often remain and other unexplained phenomena keep manifesting. These phenomena remain active and can affect animals and humans in the long term. Therefore, the areas affected should be quarantined until further notice. P10-2 Classifications P10-2 refers to a large range of life forms too diverse to specify. So diverse in fact that it's unlikely there is an actual connection between these creatures and the creation of P10-1 itself. That might merely be a side effect. The size of these creatures ranges from the size of big beetles to something the size of recently discovered dinosaurs in the United States. Most creatures show intelligence no greater than those of typical predators and act in ways that suggest they are lost in a world alien to them. Those that do show signs of sentience have acted in antagonistic or openly hostile ways. Therefore, all P10-2 instances are to be approached in accordance with the Compari protocol, no matter how benign their forms might appear. For practical purposes, the entomologists have devised a general classification overview on the creatures encountered. Type 1 Mundane creatures in every way except their appearance. Their behavior is generally typical of animals. Most are omnivorous. Type 2 Non-sentient creatures that show extraordinarily poorly understood abilities unknown to earthly flora and fauna. This includes abilities such as invisibility, limited teleportation, unusual methods of flight, mental abilities meant to stun or confuse other creatures including humans, and most concerning of all, shape-shifting. Type 3 Sentient creatures capable of advanced problem solving and or the ability to communicate. It is one of the entomologist's secondary objectives to obtain a life type 3 for interrogation. Type 4 refers to creatures or manifestations that pose an extraordinary threat due to their abilities or size. In case of a type 4 appears, protocol dictates that all other objectives become secondary to the neutralization of this threat. In case all conventional methods fail, the Campari Bitter protocol dictates to engage with whatever means are available at the time. Interview P10 32-3 This interview was taken after the P10-32 event. 
The interview was apprehended during a sweep of the outskirts after the P10 event in the town of near Reking, England. Transcript follows. All right, could you state your name for the record, please? Uh, in this thing, right? Um, Lawrence Alton, sir. Thank you, Mr. Alton. Did you live in... Born and raised, sir. Used to be a quiet town. Until I built the factory. My family used to be tailors, but, well, everybody works in the factories these days, don't they? Before this week's events, did anything of the ordinary happen? Huh. <laughs> if it had, everyone would have talked about it, so... No, it just happened that God snapped his fingers. I just came back from work. I was about to give me daughter some money for the groceries, check up on my wife, and then wanted to head to the pub. As a matter of fact, I was just heading there when things went tit. I mean, stuff happened. Please elaborate. Right. Hell broke loose right away. Stuff started moving about as if a poltergeist had appeared. I felt like I was floating myself. I accidentally bumped my head when I jumped the stairs off our porch. I didn't expect I could just jump on the roof like that. I guess that was kind of amazing. That we had a dodge all the furniture moving about, and one of our girls near us got crushed between the ceiling and the gaps of the old cabinet. Speaking of whom, have you found them yet? We are still working on that, Mr. Alton. Was there anything else? Oh, there was so much going on. I just wanted to get my wife out of there. The pregnancy has not been kind to her, you see. She could barely move. At least she didn't weigh that much anymore. In that case, please do continue. I could jump around like a spring hill jack if I wanted. It was so unreal. Like, when people realized nature decided to start off. People threw their kids from the window into the streets. And whatever else they could carry. Look like a bloody carnival act. Well, I could bring Ivy somewhere safe. I gathered our kids, and we just ran. And even later, and... There was a noise. It sounded like someone cracked the largest whip you can imagine. And there was this loud booming sound. And then everything went black for a moment, and... The bloody churchyard lit up. Then the screaming started. First I thought it was just hysteria. Then it became obvious that people were dying. I could swear I saw a body pop flying by. Could you please speak up? I don't think we quite got that. Sorry, I mean, everyone ran so fast. People broke their bones just running into each other. Then these flying things started appearing. They looked more like fish than any bird I'd ever seen. And they, they would just swoop down and just scoop people up. We had nowhere to turn in the streets. I was just fucking. I told my kids to follow, and we started jumping. Ha! Ah, more like flying in a children's story. Jumped from crate to balcony, and then on the roof. I tried to tell myself I was in some messed up dream, but I could feel the breeze and these fish things past us by. We jumped from building to building, while people down below got swarmed by things. I didn't dare to look at what these things look like. But I still saw it. There was a group of people that got cornered by this swarm of things. All I could make out were those white eyes floating in the sea of scales. And they jumped on like a tidal wave of blackness. And the screaming as these monsters covered them. And the tails were wagging upright like dark only tendrils as they... There was nothing left! I see. And... And where were you at the time? Still jumping from roof to roof. And our kids were crying as they flew beside me. I tried calling out to some of the folks in the street. Telling them to jump! Guess they were too used to being earthbound. And we keep jumping until it became obvious the effects started to wear off. Too far away from whatever was causing it, I suppose. So, so I hid my family in the attic. Then I went on my own looking for help. Or food. Something. I made my way to the edge of town. It was like so unreal. I felt this clutching on my chest as I sneaked through the gardens and alleys. I didn't see the monsters. 
But I heard them. I sensed them. Like something was pointing these things out to get me. I could see the shadow pass by. And the people. I don't know. There was this droning sound. Like. Woo! 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 I could feel the air vibrate from my toes right up to my head. It wasn't loud. But it cancelled out everything else. Everything sounded as if I was sedated. Couldn't walk straight either. Yeah. It was like being drunk without the good bits. Did you make it out? No. I made it to the edge of town where I noticed a bloke fleeing from. I can only imagine. Well, he was in a hurry. So I saw him approach the woods as he ran across the main road when I heard this weird crackle. A light between the trees lit up. There was this jet of. It was like a green light bulb being shot in. They shot him! The bastard shot him! Please calm down. Why did they have to do that? Stop resisting! Please quickly. calm down. Why should I? You're the ones that did this! Quickly. You wankers! Why the- At this moment, the interview was discontinued, and Mr. Alton had been subdued. After the interview, Mr. Alton was considered a liability due to the association's mission. An attempt to recover his family failed. In concordance with the Campari Protocol, he remains in detention while having been declared missing in the official records. Mr. Alton and other survivors will not be released until proper techniques have been developed to erase any memory of the events from their minds. Hello everyone, this is Bonser of Radio Retro Future. I hope you enjoyed this original story. It is part of the Association of Ishtar. If you want to read the story for yourself, the link is in the description. I want to thank Zertris and Vendergraf for lending their voice to this project. And of course, I want to thank all of my patrons, in particular Bowlerhead Tom and Steamy Wonders. Enjoy your Halloween everyone, and till next time.